everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be thinking outside the rectangle and making some different shaped cards. Today we're going to be using this new collection from Swellbinders. It's Country Road and there are, gosh, there's a lot of die sets. There's a stamp set. I'm showing you all of the different die sets that we're going to be using today. And I think there are four of them that I'm going to be using. And they work so well together or separately. Like this little set has so many different holiday dies. This garden builder is my favorite. If you don't already have a floral set from Spellbinders, this one is packed full of flowers and leaves and stuff. All right, so this is the first card we're going to make. And I know you're saying to yourself, but Allison, a square is still a rectangle. I know. Bear with me. We're going to start off by cutting all of the dies out of white cardstock. And I think I've said this before in a video. Um, it's easy to just color your own die cuts instead of having to cut them all out of different colors of cardstock. So I pulled out my Distress inks today. And I mean, I think I pulled out all of my Distress inks. I used so many different colors that it would be hard for me to list them all but you'll see I start shading things a little bit darker as I go along and then because this is a country kind of rustic collection I'm even coming in with some brown distress ink and kind of grunging things up because you know a wagon wheel or a wagon is is dirty from the dirt and it's old and I love how Vintage Photo Distress Ink just always adds that perfect grunge to elements. So for my wheel, I'm using different grays. And for the tires, I'm even going to come in with some black. And again, just coloring all of the elements before I start assembling them. So here we are. We're going to assemble all these pieces. And again, as with most Spellbinders products, it's super easy to assemble. Now, the part that I'm assembling right now, um, do not assemble this piece if you plan on putting stuff in the wagon. And who doesn't want to put stuff in the wagon? So later on, you'll see me realize that, oops, I probably should not have glued that on. Um, not a big deal. You'll see how I solve it. But... So we're putting all these little parts on and like I said, it's really easy, but when it comes to the wheel, um, that's where it got a little tricky. And I haven't seen anybody else assemble this wagon yet. Um, so I'm sure once I see somebody else assemble, I'm going to be like, Oh, that's how you do it. So, uh, I mean, my video with the airplane the other day with like how to put the little wheels on the plane. It's kind of like that, but, uh, well, you'll see. So this part of the wheel is easy, like how to attach the little tire pieces. But, um, over to the right, you'll see this little kind of sliver of a piece of paper that attaches the wheel to the wagon and um, that's where I'm gonna just be honest that's where it got a little tricky for me so I love this collection this is debut collection from Annie Williams and I think she knocked it out of the park um, what I love about it is it can be used for so many different holidays so many different occasions. All right, here you see me uh, messing around with this little piece. And I don't know, again, we'll see how other people assemble it. Um, but this is how I did it. And it worked. So that's all that matters. But I love just all the details on this wagon. And it's, it's really fun to put together. And I think you could do it in any color. You could do it in pink and just make a sweet little card. Um, but I 
I obviously went for the rustic look today because I am making a Thanksgiving card. So here are these different squash and pumpkins from the seasonal decor set. And I'm just showing you how I colored some of them. And this little guy was my favorite, this little squash. Um, but unfortunately, he kind of gets hidden once I packed everything into the wagon. So I might have to make another card just full of pumpkins and squash because these were a lot of fun to color. And when you're, when you're coloring with your inks, you know, just experiment with different colors. I, I had like almost every green color of ink out at my disposal. And I think they turned out really cute. So because I'm making a fall themed wagon, I decided to pull out another set, the mini fall blooms, and I'm going to add some leaves to my little wagon vignette. And again, these were, these were a lot of fun to color because I got to pull out some reds and oranges and really color them however you want, but they're so easy to make to make them look real, like real fall leaves. All right, here are the little toppers, for the stems, or whatever you want to call them, for all the squash and the pumpkins. And um, there's, there's all these little pieces in the die set, but it's very obvious which stem goes to which fruit, vegetable. I'm not sure. Are they fruit or vegetables? I think they're vegetables. All right, so here's where I realized I, I glued that back on and it would be hard to stuff stuff, stuff things into the wagon. So I just pulled it off and not a big deal. All right, so here I am auditioning my vegetables, all of my squash and pumpkins and trying to figure out how I want them arranged and as with most things I obsessed over the arrangement so I'm not going to put you through all that. All right so here's the square card. I used the fluted classic squares to make the white panel and I used a stamp from the fall greeting stamp set. I'm not sure that stamp set is available anymore on this on the Spellbinders website. I just checked. Um, it seems like every time I use something, it, it retires, but all right, you can see I put a bunch of foam tape on the back of the wagon, except for the top, because the pumpkins, all of that kind of built itself up at, at the back, so I didn't really need any more dimension there. So I just glued that part and added foam tape to the rest, and now I'm adhering it. Now, the reason I'm calling the square a shaped card is because... Well, it's not your typical A2 card. And sometimes things just look better on a square card. So don't be afraid to not use your typical A2 card. And if you're, you know, some people don't like making square cards, maybe because there's, it requires additional postage. But I have heard people just put a square card into a rectangular envelope. But, I mean, this one has dimension anyway, so I would be paying extra postage for it anyway. But I just think it fits better on a square card. And I'm just going to pop this little pumpkin up on some foam tape. And I, by the way, I had added some wheat, or basically leaves that look like wheat, into my wagon. So that's some of the other stuff that you see in the wagon. Now these are taupe uh, gems and they match really well with this embossing powder that I use, Liquid Platinum from Ranger. I think these are really good gems to use with cards that have craft paper on them. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. Spellbinders has so many gems in their store now. So here's the finished card. And I really love it. I think it's going to be perfect for Thanksgiving. Here is the second card. And 
obviously this is a shaped card. So I'm not going to go through everything as far as coloring because we already saw how to color. These are, these all started off as white cardstock, but I'm just going to show you when I have a lot of little flower elements to assemble, I kind of just make an assembly line and then it just is really quick to assemble them all. Um, I think I was saying before that this is a fabulous die set. If you don't already have some sets from Spellbinders with little flowers, this set is jam packed because it has leaves and grasses and all of these different flowers. So this is one of my new favorite sets from Spellbinders by far. And for this card, I got to pull out some brighter colors, my pinks and yellows and just, um, but I did go rustic. So here's the part where I went a little rustic. I used this paper from Tim Holtz. Um, so it's metallic, but on the back it's craft. And so this is great for when you want to grunge something up. And I, I wanted to grunge this little water pump up, but, and this is from the rustic garden set. But um, it works better if you have an embossed image and then you can really sand down to that craft paper. I didn't really get down as far as I would have liked. So I'm trying to ink it up with some brown ink just to, you know, make it look a little grungy. So we're making our card today with the Essential Arches set. And I just took two arches to make this little frame and then I put foam tape on the back so that's how I made the window and then I took the largest arch and I cut it twice out of craft cardstock and this is how we're going to make our card base so to make the card base I just took one of the panels and I'm going to score a little hinge now this panel is I believe it's five and a half inches tall, so it's the height of an A2 card. And I'm just eyeballing it. I think I ended up scoring it three or three quarters of an inch down. I could have gone a little smaller, but that's just what looked good to me at the time. There's no magic number. So to create the hinge, you just add some double-sided tape. And then you adhere that to the front of the card and it's really easy so if you ever want to make a shaped card it doesn't matter what shape it is this is how you do it all right so now I'm gonna make the background and I have another arch that I cut out of white cardstock this arch is smaller than my card base but bigger than my window opening and I'm just using distress oxides to color this now I have these little fence posts from one of the die sets and I'm marking on the piece of paper where I'm going to glue them because I want to grunge these up with my, with my brown ink and then I can glue them down. For the top fence I use my T-square but for the other ones I'm just eyeballing them. Now I'm just temporarily placing my frame so I can figure out where I want to put that fence post. And my idea was to have the fence post be visible but have it kind of be at the edge where the water pump is going to go. I'm not really sure you see it in the final card. You do at certain angles but um, I just didn't want to stick it in the middle of the card because I, I just thought that would look weird. So now I'm going to attach my window opening. And here I am going to start auditioning all of my floral elements. And so before I start gluing down, I just kind of want to figure out what looks good. And again, spending I don't know how long <laughs> trying to come up with the perfect arrangement. There is no perfect arrangement. Let's just get that straight. But um, what I do is... I put it all in there until I'm happy and then I'll take a picture of it 
and then I'll pull it all back out and start gluing everything down. Now here's my sentiment. This is a hot foiled sentiment. I hot foiled it with matte gold foil. And I think I added a few paper strips on the back just to beef it up. And I'm gonna glue my water pump. Now, without the water pump, it kind of looks like you're just kind of looking out, out the window at a nice garden scene, but I, I wanted to have that water pump. I don't know, there's something I love about it. It reminds me of going camping. Um, and there's a little kitty cat. And I had to put the kitty cat because the person I'm going to give this car to, she's an avid gardener and she also has cats. So I think she's going to love it. I love it. I love, love, love those florals. And there's the finished card. So <laughs> I had to make a snarky card as soon as I saw that, that uh, barrel. So <laughs> I added that little cork in the barrel is actually the center of a flower and I just built it up three layers high and I think that sentiment is hilarious. Now here's another collection that just came out today from Spellbinders. These are the, I believe they're called Hexy Gems. And this is another um, nested die set. And in my card, the green layer is as tall as an A2 card. So again, you just score that back, the back of your card base, um, to make a hinge and so this can be a shaped card. You could also add an ornament topper die and make this into an ornament or a tag. But I think these hexi gems are a fun addition to the shapes that Spellbinders has. And then obviously I stitched up the, um, the new stitching die, which again, you don't have to stitch if you don't like stitching. Uh, there's some fun little borders on this that are cool just by themselves. You don't have to stitch it. And that is it for me today, everybody. I appreciate you watching my video. And as always, if you like what you see, then give me a thumbs up. And I always appreciate when you subscribe to my channel and leave me comments. I hope you all have a fabulous day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.